go through the series of miracles, and I think we're going to be on our fifth week. If you want to open your Bible, of course, we're going to start in John chapter 6. So we're going through the miracles that uh, John pointed out, starting with the miracle of the changing of the water to wine, followed by this uh, miracle that uh, Jesus uh, healed this uh, uh, official son, and then the paralytic, and then last week we talked about Morgan's board, remember that? The feeding of the 5,000. And today, we're going to be right in smack in the middle of John chapter 6, because this is the uh, miracle of Jesus walking on water. I don't know about you, but I tried that, but uh, I sank. So, you know, I was just young in my faith. I'm like, let me try to walk. But, you know, I didn't get around to here. So, let me just tell you about storms. Growing up in the Philippines, you know, I have been through a lot of storms. Okay, storms like, um, it's a part of life. So, um, of course, different here in the States, you get some few, but, um, you know, growing up in the mom, when I was young, storms, like every every year we would get three to four storms a year. So, let me just present to you this first one. This is, uh, of course, this is the storm tip, typhoon tip is the name. It was in 19, October 12, 1979. And according to this, this is the, it's about 305 kilometers per hour wind. About 190 miles per hour, something like that, a little bit over. So there's a lot of people that died. Uh, actually, if you look at the map, the coverage of the storm, that's the Philippines in between, there's about three of them that joined together and speak. You know, the distance between Thailand and the Philippines, that's the size of the storm. That's about a three hour flight. So that means from California to about you know, somewhere in uh, Texas at the very end. That's a huge storm. And that is just one. But yet in 2018, uh, 2013, there's something more powerful than that. I think you've heard this. This is the Typhoon Yolanda. High end is the name. So that one I remember more because, again, I was nine years old at that time. So today I'm just about 18. Not, not far. You know, I'm kidding, of course. And high end is more powerful is because, again, um, it's $95.5 billion in that, uh, pesos in damage. Okay, 6,300 people died. Actually, this wiped out. It's like a tsunami that wiped the whole lake. And still a lot of work that we did that as a church with set people. We have actually a future church there in which we help and people. Stories that have sat down with people that have heard what was happening, the water rose, and a lot of people died. Storms. I don't know about you, but some people like storms. I don't. I want to be honest. If you live in the Philippines like me, you don't like storms. And I'm not, of course, I'm just trying to be sensitive here. That's why when the atmospheric water river is happening and people are getting crazy in California because there's a lot of water, that's regular storms. That's not what we call storms. I remember the first day we landed here and uh, there was a, an alert on my app. And then there's like a flash flooding alert that I got. Of course, I got two girls at that time. Uh, I was think, uh, you know, grade school and and uh, I think about middle school at that time, you know, high school. And here's what happened. I went out and there's about this much water in the street and, and flush flood. <laughs> that is not flush flood. <laughs> I just wanted to say. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, make it this worse. This storm is better than the other. It's just like my experience, you know. Last flood for us is that when you go, it's about here. So and you have to swim going to the other, you know, you're a tunnel, right? right? So it's about up to your hip. You're still okay. I mean, people still go to work. And then you go to work. By the time you get there, they cancel work. That's how it works. For some reason. You go to school early in the morning because our school starts at 7 o'clock. You get there, you're swimming going to the school. When you get there, after 30 minutes, the teacher stands up, and by the way, the class is canceled. I'm like, really? I figured, because we were swimming going here. So, and then you have to swim back now, which is a lot deeper, by the way, because you got there about me, about your hip when you get there. So, storms. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Somehow a little bit different, but yet still the same, because there's something about the storm that makes you afraid. The wind, come on now, the water, and all of those, when you see the water rising, something, especially if you have some bad experiences about that. And believe me, I'm not good at, you know, boats and wind and stuff. I'm just being honest with you. That's why I'm never going to be a Navy, I think. 
dad. He was my dad, sort of, for 28 years, so he has some, he has a boat. We took it one time. We took it out in Chesapeake Bay. I was there. After three hours, I was spitting my guts. There's no storm. It was clear. So and I'm like, hmm, maybe not for me. So let's read this story, okay? In John chapter 6, if you're to open, this is Jesus, of course, and Jesus, the story is about Jesus walking on water. The start of verse 16, it says here, and I'm reading here, when evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now, it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. Next verse, when they they had broke three or what, three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. During the word of prayer, Lord, we ask you to speak to us today. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would guide us. Lord, I pray that as we look at these miracles, as John's pointed out, Lord, within this series, that it leads to you. What about you that we need to understand when we look at this miracle, you walking on water and calming the storm? Lord, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me give you a little context of what was going on starting with verse 16. Of course, when he think came, the disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started across the deep to Capernaum. Actually, if you read a uh, different translation, you would see that Jesus sent them there. I'm going to show that to you later. Here's the, if you read the verses before that, remember, we're studying about the feeding of the 5,000. I don't know about you, but it was a great moment for the disciples. Amen? So Jesus had five loaves and two fish. He broke it, and he started giving it. The Bible says he fed 5,000 men. Actually, the theologian would say that, you know, when you count everybody there, women and children, it's in between about 50 to 20,000 people. That's a lot of food. With little or small fish, and small barley loaves. And they, I don't know about you, but if I'm one of the disciples, I'm excited, man. I'm distributing that food, and it's multiplying, and you're giving it to people. It's going to be fun. You're in the right smack in the middle of one of the greatest miracles. What a moment, to be honest with you. And now Jesus sent them. They got into the boat. They went to Capernaum, and then says, here, now, it was now dark. You know, you know some of those stories, when you read those, there's something happening now. Something bad is happening because it says, it was now dark. <laughs> and Jesus had not yet come to them. And here's what happened in verse 18. And a strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. Wow. Let's read out a translation because, by the way, this is also recorded in Matthew chapter 14 and Mark chapter 6. The same story. Here's how Matthew described this situation. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. You know why Jesus is praying? Because if you read the book of John, the people are forcing him to be king because Jesus fed them. And again, they want to follow Jesus. Remember the preaching last Sunday is because there's a physical need that's being met. Well, oh, the instability of people. We want Jesus is because Jesus could provide something that we want. But yet Jesus said, no. It's not you who's going to anoint me as king. I'm already a king. My God, I'm going to follow God's will. And then here's what he did. He prayed. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already considerable distance from land. Buffeted by the winds. That means being hit by the wind. Waves, rather. Because the wind was against that. So wow. So right there at that moment. A great moment with Jesus. A great miracle. You're distributing food. You are the peak of your what? Experience with the Lord. And then the storm comes. Here's what, how Mark described this woman. He saw the disciples training the horse because the wind was against them. Actually, this is common in Galilee because they call it a wind storm because of the above sea water level air, hot air, mixes with the cold what? Wind from the mountains. Usually it happened from time to time. And they call it a wind storm. I don't know about you, but there are moments in my walk with God where everything is doing great, but yet then storm comes. Yeah. What's the lesson here? I want you to look at here. Storms will come in a moment that you don't expect it. They will come. Everything was doing great, and then boom! Just like that. Yeah, just like that. The storm didn't announce it. Hey, I'm coming. Thank 
God through the technology now that you could still predict, right? Um, you have active weather and all of those things that is happening. But I want you to look up here. But how about the storms of life? Can I predict? I wish I could. Everything was doing great. You are worshiping God. Just like what Kim was saying a while ago. Everything was good last year and then boom. Oh, where's the money, Lord? I'm serving you. I'm giving my tithes and offerings. And what was going on here? Everyone was healthy and then boom! Storms. Storms will come. Storms in life, they will come. It's not a matter of if, people, but it's when. Everything was good and now you have some misunderstanding with people. Everything is good between your husband, your, your spouse, and now you're not in good terms. Everybody's healthy and now storms. And here's what happened, continuing with the story. When they had road three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the road about six kilometers. That's long. That the station said they were straining the wall, and that means they were fighting it. You have to remember some of them were fishermen, they're good at this. That they were straining, they were fighting three and a half miles. Oh, that's tough, man. Going for three and a half miles. I walk for one mile, I'm tired. <laughs> but rowing, come on. And then you're fighting the man, and there's the way. <sighs> Some of the people that I'm looking at you, you're gonna survive because you're fit. The rest of us, mm -hmm. so Charlie, most probably he's gonna be good. Josh, a little bit there. <laughs> Kim was probably because I saw the video on Facebook always exercising. And Sarah, I want to be with them. The rest of us, we're just going to pray. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help us. Well, they're roaming. <laughs> Come on, we're going to cheer you. And here's what happened. They saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on water. Wow. And read that with me, the highlighted one. And they were what? Terrified. Fear. Let's look at Mark, the same story. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they were they thought he was a ghost. Oh. <laughs> but we know we're kind of like being superstitious, right? Everything that moves is a ghost. <laughs> Similar to the Jewish culture. It's a spiritual realm for them is more real, so they kind of like connect that. They cried out because they all saw him and were what? Terrified. It's interesting about this, they didn't really recognize Jesus. It's a ghost. Imagine you're dying, you're about to die, and you see a ghost. Don't worry, you terrified. You're like, we're going to die! We're going to die! No! We're going to die! <laughs> so I'm just imagining in my head. Sorry, that's me. Not only the storms come, at the time that you least expect it, but also, what you listen to, storms are magnifiers. It would magnify what's in your heart. You know, there are two powerful perspectives here that the scripture wanted you to see. The perspective of faith and the perspective of fear. And somehow storms magnifies that. Not only a physical storm, but storms of life. What's the difference? Powerful perspective, but yet totally opposite. Fear, what? Faith is constructive. Fear is destructive. Faith is grounded in truth. Fear is grounded in the lies of the enemy. It's so interesting though because again, we're just with Jesus. This is not really, really, really like three days or three months just right after one of the greatest miracles. They have seen Jesus multiply the bread. They have seen Jesus multiply the fish. And now, at that particular moment, they cannot even recognize Jesus. It magnified really what's in their heart. Even the greatest miracle, they didn't put their faith in God. Actually, if you read the book of Mark, it says that because they didn't understand what happened to the bread, their heart were, hearts were hardened. Huh. It's 
storms will come. It is time that you expect it. And also it will magnify what's in your heart. Let me ask you this. What storms are you facing right now? Life storms. Things that doesn't work. Someone is sick. What's being magnified? Faith of thee. As good as that is, that's not the message. Because remember, the message is about Jesus. Amen? So what's John trying to reveal to us today? Because there's something about Jesus here that he's trying to reveal to us. Why is he walking on water? I mean, the story in Mark chapter 4 actually is quite different. Jesus just rebuked the wind. He was sleeping there twice that, you know, he rebuked the storm. On the first one, Mark chapter 4, he was sleeping the Christian and then he stood up and rebuked and everything was calm. Actually, this is the second story. This is the second time that they've been with Jesus in the storm. Oh, but they have not learned. Interesting, isn't it? So what's the story? I know we can go and talk about the storm and magnify the storm, but that's not what John's trying to figure out here. And what is that? Here's a simple message. Jesus is Lord over the storm. If you miss this, you miss the whole thing. Because you can have storms and it magnifies anything, but Jesus is not there. So it's just another storm. It's not over the storm. Let's pause. What do you mean? What's John trying to say here? Actually, storms, okay, especially someone walking in the first century Jewish culture, the control of nature is attributed to a deity. That's why. Even in pagan religions like Thor, or God of Thunder, right? Yeah. And actually, Baal is a god who controls the what? The weather. That's why the prophet Elijah encountered with Baal in First Kings chapter seventeen and eighteen. What was that about? Because again, Elijah said it's not going to rain for three years. Did it rain? Then Elijah said it's going to rain, and there was a contest, and God proved to what? Elijah proved to everyone else. Your God is not God because my God is God. Today it's going to rain. Imagine, drop for three years and then it rained. My God is the real God. <laughs> so, what is John trying to make you see here? Actually, if you follow the story and I had this big conversation with Nate in the parking lot about this, actually. So, what was fine walking on water? Maybe you could just said, wait on the other side. Why walk? Is Jesus showing off? If you're dying in the storm, man, you can come on, man. It's chill. Why, why, why? Come on, come on, of all these things, why? Because John is pointing out to you, actually, there's another thought here, school of thought. Because if you follow the story of John, actually John 1 verse 17 says that the law came with Moses, but truth and grace from Jesus. Because John is presenting it to you, there's someone here who's greater than Moses. Just like the turning of the water into wine, Moses what? Spoke and rock, what came out of the rock, this one, the jar. The feeding of the 5,000 is like, remember, Jesus already looked at that in chapter 6. It's the people said, oh, you're better, you know, oh, we ate the bread from, our father ate the bread from mama from heaven. And Jesus said, no, there's something better because John is highlighting someone here. Actually, some theologian would say that Jesus walking on water is just showing to us. It's almost like Moses when he was crossing the Red Sea. There's someone here who's greater than Moses who could deliver you. Jesus, Lord over the storm. What's the simple message? He is God. Because if it is something more powerful, imagine a 
Typhoon Yolanda, or the most powerful typhoon that you would ever take. And God is going over that? Wow. He is going over the storm. So look at the storm of life. Look up here. Who told the disciples to go to the other side? Jesus. He said, they go to Capernaum, our father. So Jesus knew that there's going to be a storm. But he sent them anyway. Haven't we noticed that? <coughs> Jesus could have warned them and said, oh, by the way, don't ride the boat. There's going to be a storm. No, no, I, you know, because the storm already is powerful, but yet he still let them because I'm the Lord over the storm. Go ahead, you will face the storm, but it's okay. In life, it's the same thing. You're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some storms. You're going to be some tensions in relationship. You're going to have some of those, but it's okay because it's Lord over the storms. Sometimes we pray, Lord, take this away. Take this away. But God says, no, 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 it's okay. You need to go through the storms. The disciples need to go through the storms because in that storm, they had a great revelation of who God is. It took twice, though, and sometimes it reminds me of me. I have to go to the same storm for me to realize one lesson that God is in control. Twice. And sometimes we read the scripture and we're like, oh, come on, petty disciples. How, how could you miss that? But how many times have it happened to you before? Same lesson, same storm. And you're like, Lord, why is this happening again? And God scratching said, maybe this is just me thinking, you're not asking one. Well, you made the same decision again. You did the same thing. Oops, you did it again. <laughs> what are you thinking? Some dorky people in this church. <laughs> but that's the lesson. Two lessons under that. The Lord, Jesus will always go. Here's the first one. Jesus will not abandon you in the midst of the storm. Oh, yeah. Because he's the Lord of the storm. Here's what it is. Over. Amen. Lord over, Jesus will not abandon you. Look at them. Verse 20, what did Jesus do? But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. It is I. You have to recognize Jesus in the midst of the storm. Sometimes when you're in the storm, all the things that you hear are what? The wind, the waves, the sounds around you. If you don't hear the voice of God, you have to recognize him and you have to hear him. Look at Matthew chapter 6 verse 50 because they were they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately spoke to them and said, Take courage. It is I. Do, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. He's not going to abandon you. He's the one who what, sent the disciples to go ahead. But you have to trust his word. Jesus says, Go to the other side. You have to trust him. But yet, in the midst of the storm, that's quite difficult, right? God says a promise. Now that's being tested. You know, voices everywhere. You're getting offended. Things are not happening. You know, tensions flaring up. Now you start thinking, Lord, where are you? Look up here. God's timing is always perfect. It didn't come before the storm. That's right there. Where they were screaming, they were fighting. <sighs> Bro, they were counting, you know, those dragon boat races. <laughs> <laughs> when they're not getting anywhere after three months. But they tried. How many times did we do that? We still try. We still try. No, I'm gonna work this out. No, I'm gonna work this out. No, I'm gonna work this out. You're not getting anywhere. The wind started getting stronger. Waves. Come on. This is one of the darkest moments in their life when they're still fighting. And then Jesus said, and they all saw Jesus and they didn't recognize Jesus. They were terrified more. And then Jesus says, uh, it is I. I'm glad that Jesus said that. Jesus didn't say, boom. <laughs> <laughs> or Jesus does sneak up at the back of the boat, right? If that would be me, I would do that. I would be walking out there at the back. I'm like, boom. Ah! You might be jumping. Some of them are professional fishermen. I mean, you know, this 
At that moment, their skills, everything gone because they were terrified they're going to die. Mm. In the midst of the storm, the things that you know sometimes get flushed into the drain because you just want to survive. Jesus introduces himself again to his side. Why? Because he didn't recognize Jesus. What's the word? Take courage. And the next one? Don't do it. I don't, know, I don't know about you. In storms of life, usually there's fear. Is because I feel like I'm alone. And I have no one to rely on. Good thing about Jesus is that he never abandons us in the midst of this. And here's the last one. Jesus is mightier than this one. More powerful Look at the description of John. Then they were willing to take him. Interesting word, willing to take him, because they were not willing at the first time, because they didn't know who he is. Imagine taking in a ghost. <laughs> but this time, because they recognize him, willing. Some of you need to recognize Jesus in that. You are not willing to take Jesus in your boat. That's because you're so overwhelmed with the storm. And look at what happened. And immediately the boat reached the shore. What do you mean? What do you mean? There we go. Three miles. Immediately. Yes. They were straining, but now quickly they were Not after a few hours, immediately. It was like a what? Turbo power or whatever. Because look at what Mark said. <clears throat> then he climbed into the boat with them. And the wind died down, then we go to the others. You have to invite Jesus to go inside the boat. And the greatest miracle happened. They were immediately the other side. What was the word? Go to the other side. Who said that? Jesus. Who got them there? Jesus. Not them. Not your straining. Not your fighting. Jesus. Interesting about this story is that the nuance of you know, the addition of this is that when you read Mark, Mark, Matthew chapter 14, it was not recorded in John or Mark, it was Matthew 14. Where they saw Jesus, here's the story. Peter recognized Jesus, and Peter said, If it is really that, if that's for you, let me just go out with you. That's actually the story in Matthew 14. John didn't record, Mark didn't record, but Matthew recorded that. He went out of the boat. Imagine the wind story. And the Bible says he was walking with Jesus. Amen. And then after that, what happened? In the story, he began to look at the waves, look at the wind, and then he began to sink. He got distracted. And then here's the shortest prayer in the Bible. Lord, Save me. And Jesus comes through. I want you to look here. If you made that, whatever prayer you make to the Lord, as long as it's from your heart, Jesus will be there. He didn't say, I'll find out what you did, and I'll do that, and I'll do that. But if I'm finished, he's dead. That's not what you need. I'll just forgive. I'll do it. Just that. Amen. Jesus said, no, it's the shortest prayer. Why? Because that's what he needs to be saved. And then here's what happened in Matthew 14. And when they climbed into the boat, saying, I invited to the boat, the wind died down. Interesting. When they get into the boat, the wind died down. Read the three stories. Something about Jesus coming into the boat and everything else being calm. This time he didn't rebuke it. His mere presence, the storm recognized, the nature recognized that and obeyed. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him. Interesting. And look at what they said. Truly you are what? What storms are you in right now? Maybe just praying, Lord, remove this storm. 
maybe the person be Lord, what are you really thinking about me? And maybe the prayer is that, Lord, let me invite you into my world. Because I'm doing this on my own. Because Jesus is Lord over this song. Typhoon high end is powerful. 9.5 billion pesos, 6,300 people died. But I experienced another storm in 2018. There's one person who died, 26,000. Not billions of pesos, millions and close to about two million pesos. It was my first wife. She was diagnosed with cancer in 2016. 2018, when she passed away. 2010. Yeah, she died in 2010. 2010. Yeah, 20. Thank you. I know. Thanks for the wives, right? Remember the day. It's just like, together, that. Okay, we're already Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. 2008, 2010, when she passed away. Oh, that's the biggest storm. Storm, life storm that I've ever faced, like nothing else. Two years of battling with cancer, in and out of the hospital, moving from one doctor, praying, believing for a miracle. It's so interesting is because in that moment, God is moving powerfully in the church that I was pastoring then. People are getting cured from cancer. People that get out of pray, they have my wife and nothing. Uh, I would lie down sometimes and be like, Lord, what's going on? Why? why? Or pray, Lord, why? 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 And then finally the Lord answered after two years and say, why not? And that would be enough for me. Because I realized that in the midst of that storm, God never abandoned me. He was there. He was there. Never left me alone. Never. This is my theory. It's because again, at the end of the day, this will, will be accomplished. What storms are you facing? Maybe this time, instead of you facing that alone, like the disciples, maybe you have not known Jesus yet. Maybe it's time for you to be introduced to him. And then you invite him. Your I sit here, I see many stories of miracle, like Oliver being diagnosed with one of the what rare diseases of the face where we were praying and believing God. And God answering him is pretty much a miracle being here. One of the greatest storms that they face as a family. They don't know if he's gonna remain paralyzed in his face, but it's gonna happen. But that came through. For some of you, maybe something else. I don't know. But here's what I know. Jesus is Lord of the storm. And this is what John is trying us. Trying to communicate to us. Either now you respond in faith or through faith. Yes, but thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for just speaking to us, Lord, this morning. We're grateful. Because you are Lord over the storm. Lord over the storm. That's bottom piece and eyes close. If you're here today and you're going through some situations and storm-like situations in your personal walk with him or in your family and your situation and you're saying, God, I need you to be with me in this journey. I know faith. Faith needs to rise up. Fear screams. But faith is what we need to put our faith in Him. A difficult, impossible situation. You know, the message of the Lord is take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. I want you to hear that today as you look at that impossible situation. 
Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, I pray that you would comfort your people today with those words. And if that's you, and there's a challenging situation, a storm-like situation, and say, I need to hear that, Pastor, from the Lord today. I'm inviting him. I'm inviting him to get into the boat with me. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hands and to pray for me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are lifting up their hands. Some of them are lifting up their hands because of a family situation, a misunderstanding with family members. Lord, I pray for your healing. Maybe for some, Lord, it's a situation about a family member who is sick right now. Lord, we declare that by your stripes they are healed. We pray, Jesus. Lord, for some, maybe an uncertainty about, you know, a situation in life. Lord, right now, I pray. I pray, Lord. And for some, Lord, would be a provision. A situation about a provision, Lord, right now. In the name of 